Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy. Today's video is gonna be slightly different from the usual clinical education videos that you see on this channel, because it's going to focus on the study materials I use to prepare for the Applied Knowledge Test, also known as the AKT. This is a postgraduate medical exam in the UK used for part of the assessment for membership of the Royal College of GPs. In this video, I'm going to cover what the AKT is, my study plan, as well as the resources that I use to prepare for it, including a brief review of the pros and cons of each of these study resources. And finally, I'll go over what happens on the day of the exam, as well as my personal experiences of it. I've included some timestamps for each of these sections so you can go back and forth to the sections that you think are going to be most relevant and most beneficial for you. Now, before I get into the main section of this video, I just want to clarify that I've got no conflicts of interest. I haven't been paid or sponsored by any organization or any company that uses or prepares AKT material. This is purely designed as a video to give you an open and transparent view as to what one candidate, i.e. myself, used to prepare for the GP AKT, which is obviously a huge hurdle in GP training. I also hope just to increase awareness of the variety of resources that are available that are going to suit your learning style best. So first of all, what is the AKT? Well, if you're watching this video, you probably already know that the AKT is a computer-based knowledge assessment, which you can take from the beginning of your GPST2 year. And there are three sittings every year, which usually occur in October, January, as well as April. The exam is a computer-based assessment, usually taken at a Pearson View Centre, and there are multiple exam centres across the UK with booking times that you can access over a period of about two to three days. So when the booking times are released, just try and make sure that you get a centre that is close by. I've included a link to the RCGP website, which has got all of the details about the administrative side of the exam in the description box of this video. So there are about 200 questions to answer in three hours and 10 minutes, and the exam is split into 80% clinical knowledge, 10% admin and management, and 10% statistics. So you've got 160, 20, and 20 questions, respectively. I'd say that it's a good idea to spend a good amount of time revising the management, admin, and stats and evidence sections, because essentially these are an easy 40 marks to pick up, which could make a big difference between passing or not. Obviously, if you've got dyslexia or other requirements, then you get extended time in the exam. So I'll just talk briefly about my preparation for the exam, just to give you a general flavor of what I did. So I sat the exam in the first six month block of ST2 training, which was April, 2022. And prior to this, I had one six month ENT job and one six month GP job prior to sitting the exam. And I did it in my first job of ST2, which was my palliative care job. I found that completing a GP rotation was really helpful because during this block, I was able to cover topics that I felt weaker on with my trainer during the weekly tutorials. And I was also regularly referring to the nice clinical knowledge summaries or CKS after consultations with the patients. And this meant that the nice guidelines were quite fresh in my mind. I also like the fact that during this preparation phase, I didn't really have many on-call shifts in the evenings and weekends, which meant that I was able to dedicate chunks of time to revise. So if you do have the opportunity to do the exam in a less busy job relatively, then this would be a good idea. In terms of prep time, I gave myself around five months to prepare for the exam. And I started off pretty gently in the first month by doing multiple choice questions from one of the question banks on a pretty ad hoc basis. At this early stage, I wasn't really covering topics in order, but I did a general mix of questions to get a feel as to where my weak areas were, as well as just to get back into the swing of studying because I hadn't revised for an exam for quite some time. Now, the time that you're going to need to prepare for the exam will obviously depend on your study style and how you learn. And I just think that as adult independent learners, and we've taken exams many times before, you're going to know how much time you need to prepare based on your own study techniques. I personally like to work slowly and steadily on things, which is why my preparation phase might sound relatively long. So in the three months before the exam, I went into work usually 45 minutes early and I tried to do 20 to 30 questions from a question bank and I tried to make notes on the questions that I got wrong. I then spend a further hour or two in the evening at home revising and during this period, I went through each individual clinical topic in turn. So for example, paediatrics, women's health, endocrinology, and rather than taking the shotgun approach that I'd taken at the earlier stage, I tried to work 
through each thing logically. Now I know that two hours or three hours of revision a day sounds like quite a lot, and obviously if you've got other commitments or children, they, this may not be possible, but this is just to give you a completely transparent view of what I did for my own preparation. Obviously this is gonna vary for different people. So now I'm going to get into the main section of the video, which is to go over the resources that I used for the exam, essentially in order of the ones that I used the most and also found the most helpful, and I've included a link to all of the resources that I mentioned in the description box of this video to help you guys out. So the first important resource was the RCGP self-assessment question bank. I'm going to go through the positives and negatives of each resource and again this is just my own opinion. So I found that the question style was very similar to the actual exam, albeit the questions were potentially more challenging than those in the real exam. I found that the explanations were generally very good and I'd encourage you to read these and make notes on them because although there are a limited amount of questions in the RCGP question bank, the explanations are very good and once you've covered those you're actually covering quite a breadth of information. The resource was also free which is obviously great if you're a GP trainee because there are obviously high costs of training and the exam itself is expensive. I would say there are between 1,500 and 2,000 questions in total in the question bank and unlike other resources the RCGP say that the question banks or the question bank that they have is written by working GPs so it's much more relevant and tailored to life as a GP. So in terms of the downsides of the resource, well, there were a limited number of questions compared to other question banks. However, if you did the test for each section, so for example, women's health, there would be 20 questions. You should do all 20 questions. Once you've done them, press submit, then a new set of questions will come up. Some of those will repeat, but there will also be new ones in there. I did find that some topics had more questions than others, but it's worth repeating some of these questions anyway. Unfortunately, the website did freeze two weekends before the exam over the Easter bank holiday weekend, so this wasn't ideal in terms of preparation. I just think a lot of people were trying to access it, so do try to go through this at an early stage in case this happens again. So the next important resource, which I think are essential, are the NICE clinical knowledge summaries, or CKS. So obviously NICE guidelines are continually updated, which is in contrast to some of the question banks, and they do form a large component of the exam. Again, they're free to access, and I found that some of the exam questions drew on NICE guidelines, especially when asking what tests and what first-line investigations you want to do. And obviously it's just good to be familiar with these as part of day-to-day -day practice. Another top tip would be to sign up to the NICE updates, which you can do by visiting a link that I've included in the description box of this video. Essentially what you will get is an email every month to your inbox and it will just update you as to any changes to the NICE guidelines. I also made summaries of the NICE guidelines, so I printed these off and then highlighted key sections before summarising them even further before the exam itself. In terms of downsides, to be honest, the only downside was the vast number of clinical knowledge summaries. Um, but to help with this, there are summaries of the essential information which appear on the first line of each clinical topic or first um, part of each clinical topic on the web page. Um, in terms of the notes that I made, I'm thinking about maybe putting those onto a website if people might find those helpful so people can access them freely. They were really useful for me. Again, part of the usefulness of make, was actually making the notes. Um, but if this is something that people are interested in, let me know in the comments section below and I'll try to sort this out. Now, in order to tailor my revision for the last couple of weeks, I did read through all of the examiner's reports from the last five years, and I found that these were really useful because they highlighted common topics where candidates did well, and also those where they didn't do so well. And my thinking behind this was that if there were recurring areas, so for example, ophthalmology, where candidates were performing poorly, I thought that this may come up in the exam because they obviously would want to test this topic given that previous candidates hadn't done so well. So I made sure I read through each of the examiner's reports the last five years, went through the topics that they mentioned were weaker, and then went away and did extra reading around these and extra questions. Just before the exam, the next important resource that I used was the free MRCGP AKT official mock. This was essentially a 50 question mock exam. The questions were relatively similar to those in the exam in terms of the style in which they were written, and they did come with explanations. So it's worth doing a couple of days before the exam. 
Now, the main question bank that I used in addition to the RCGP one was the BMJ on examination resource. It cost me around £90 and I managed to find a discount code online which got me around 20% off this. Now, I know that there are lots of question banks out there, but this was just the one that I used personally. In terms of the benefits, it was a large question bank. The questions were pretty good in general and you were able to compare your performance as you went through the question bank just to see how you're progressing. In terms of the downsides, I found that some explanations weren't quite up to date and some of the questions were a little bit too basic, but overall it was a good resource. And again, the key thing was to read the explanations because that contained so much extra information. Leading up to the exam, I think I had a little bit of a panic in terms of was I covering enough? And I found that I was using maybe slightly different resources to other trainees. So I did sign up to the 14 Fish ePortfolio Software Education Strand, which is built into the 14 Fish platform. I know that some deaneries pay for their trainees to be able to access the AKT package. Unfortunately, my deanery didn't pay for this, so I paid around £99 for it, but I believe that you can claim it back from your study leave budget. In terms of the upsides of it, there were some useful videos on it in terms of admin and statistics. Um, there were also useful clinical videos um, and the person who ran the website or the 14 Fish training platform did encourage you to try and summarise the BNF. This is something that I didn't have time to do in the way that they wanted you to, but I did go through the BNF, just key chapters, looking at indications for common drugs and common side effects. The next question bank that I think a lot of trainees seem to use was Pass Medicine. I didn't actually sign up to this until about a month before the exam. I was focusing mainly on the RCGP one and also the um, BMJ on exam one, but I did sign up to it just to see if the questions were any different. I did find the questions were quite similar to the BMJ on exam. Um, I think that the explanations were pretty good on past medicine, but some of the questions did feel more like MRCP style questions. And also some of the questions can be written by trainees. So the quality is highly variable. And again, think of the quality of questions versus the depth of the content that you're going into when you're using the study resources. There was also something called WellMedic. This is run by a practicing GP with a keen interest in medical education, a guy called Dr. Sham Mahmood. He offered a free half day prep course, which I found out about by following his Instagram page. This was really helpful and useful. He went into a lot of interesting points around statistics as well as admin. Um, I also listened to his podcasts, which I found on Spotify. Essentially, these were short clinical summaries, each about two to three minutes long in the style of a clinical case scenario and then exam question. And again, this was, I thought was a good use of time driving back and to um, back and forth from placements, um, which otherwise might have been dead time. So now I'll just briefly cover some of the resources I didn't use, but I heard from other trainees were quite helpful. So the first is the Bradford VTS website. This is generally an excellent resource. It's got loads of PDFs and presentations, which is super useful for GP training in general. The downside is that there's so much information on the website and some of it is a little bit out of date. So you do have to sift through a lot of irrelevant stuff to find the things that are relevant. There are also some useful books out there. So there was a book called Medical Statistics Made Easy. The only reason I didn't use this book personally is because I've got a background in research. And so I felt it was probably best focusing my own revision time on the admin and clinical sections of the exam for revision. However, if I hadn't had this basic understanding of stats previously, then I probably would have found this book useful. Looking at Amazon, the book's around £45 for a new copy, £25 for a used copy. If you're in the hospital, see if the hospital library can do an interview to library loan or even have their own copy and if you're a member of the BMA I think you can access the BMA library and they'll send the book to your house again just to cut down the costs of this exam and the preparation for the exam. Finally I didn't use some of the more expensive resources that were out there some of these were in excess of £200 for a course I personally felt that this was a huge amount of money to pay in addition to the cost of taking the exam itself and I didn't feel it was necessary my honest opinion is that if you've passed medical school finals, you can pass the AKT with the resources that I've mentioned. I think some people get really worried about the volume or number of resources that have accessed, but I think it's better to actually use fewer resources and then really dive deep into these. And what I mean by this is instead of doing a thousand questions and maybe scoring 60% and keep doing those questions quickly again and again, rather focus on maybe 500 questions. And although you still may only be getting 60% or 50%, read through the explanations and try to really understand those and just practice some active recall.
If there is enough interest and if I do get time, I can run a few study with me videos where I'll cover 20 to 30 core questions for different clinical topics or statistics or admin, for example, and then I can go through the answers and explain the theory behind each of the questions if there's enough interest. So again, just let me know in the comments section. If you were to ask me what the top three must-have resources were, I would say definitely cover the NICE guidelines if you've got time and try summarise some of the key chapters in the BNF in terms of common drugs and side effects. I'd say definitely do the RCGP self-assessment question bank as well as the mock exam, which is the 50 question mock exam, and then just choose one of the question banks and work through this by reading the explanations. On terms of the day of the exam, I got there just on time. Unfortunately, I had some issues with transport, but you do need to try and get there about 15 minutes, half an hour before the exam starts. You need two forms of ID, so don't forget to bring these. I brought a passport and a credit card. You got your own computer. It was almost sectioned off in a booth. You had headphones. It was a really well-run exam in the center that I took it at. There was a basic on-screen calculator um, and I made sure I flagged the questions I wasn't sure about and then I came back to these. So I made sure I got through the exam quickly because there's no negative marking. You get the results about three weeks after it was really well run and the results came out on the date and time that the um, college said they would come out. Um, so overall, I hope the video is useful and helpful. I think the main message is that the exam is expensive. You don't need to buy lots of extra resources and just focus on the ones that I've mentioned. Try just to cover things in detail and, and practice doing practice tests for timing. I hope you did find this video useful, helpful and informative. Any questions, comments, queries, leave them in the comments section below. I will get back to you. Best of luck for the AKT. It was a huge weight off my shoulders when I found out that I passed it. And obviously I was extremely grateful and thankful. Had a lot of help from my trainers and previous clinical mentors. Um, and I do hope you can do the very best in this exam. I wish you all the best of luck and thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.